Welcome back. This is Richard Sachs on Lost Arts Radio, and you're listening to us on our guest show. It's a Sunday night show, and we have a treat tonight as one of our friends, Dr. Ola Johansson, I think I pronounced that right, is back with us to talk about a lot of interesting things, and he's well known in the scientific world as one of the uh, m- most accomplished and amazing researchers in damage of EMF fields on human biology. And th- I was looking at all the different reviews of his work, and one of them, there's a site that I'd never seen before called noxtech.com. And he probably knows all about it, but it, it had a uh, synopsis in one sentence, and it said about Dr. Johansson, one of the highest authorities in the world in terms of knowledge of the effects of electromagnetic fields on health. He began researching it more than 30 years ago and has since published hundreds of scientific papers. And then there there are pages of elaboration on that, which we could use the whole show on. And instead of that, you know, parts of it will come up, I'm sure. But we have a short time, and what I'd like to do is we have some important things to get into, and we'll talk about those in just a second. So welcome, Dr. Johansson. It's a pleasure just to see you again. So thank, thank you. you. Um, <clears throat> what I, I was thinking about what we could do, and, you know, my, my interest is not to repeat the thousands of other inter- interviews that you've done, because if people want to hear that, that, they have so many options all over the internet, reading your papers, and I want to do something unique. So there are two things I thought of. One is to bring us up to date on the status of your work and what you'd like to see happen at this point in time, how people can support it and where you'd like to see it go. What are you working on? And the second is I want to ask you some things about science as it applies to the world situation today. And I think that could be very educational. So first of all, how about what you're working on now and where you'd like to see it go further? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, that's a, a very interesting question because uh, just today I've had a number of emails kind of pointing in different directions. One very impressive one is about a lady in Greece, Diana Cordas, who has compiled detailed observational studies regarding various insects, pollinators, and others, uh, and a very, very dramatic reduction on one of the islands called Samos. And as you know, that's what is reported everywhere. And for my own sake, we have tried the last years to um, initiate and further activate research projects studying the impact of Uh, um, artificial electromagnetic fields like from cell phone systems, wireless internet, etc. on pollinators, especially honeybees and bumblebees. And you probably know that in the United States, for instance, there is a more than 90%, 90% reduction of bumblebees. And already 2017, it was reported from Germany, uh, a general reduction of all pollinators uh, to the extent of more than 75%. And, and this, this is alarming, to say the least, you know. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I get so many emails every day. And that kind of brings me all the circle around because I got one today where a lady suggested that she should connect me with um, a campaigner activist in the environmental area, uh, and uh, we should have uh, constructive dialogues and discussions. And I don't know what happened with me, but <laughs> being a kind and nice Swede, I suddenly turned a little bit, um, how should I say, um, angry, not too angry, but uh, more um, harsh. And yeah. I wrote back and said, you know, that, we don't need more discussions. We don't need more hypotheses, impacts, uh, and, and ideas, and so on. We need money. Uh, it's so simple. We need to investigate the questions that are lying right in front of us, and especially now with new systems coming. We're talking a lot about the most recent fourth 
a fourth generation of 4G mobile telephony, and now it's being uh, changed into 5G, the fifth generation, and already there are discussion about 6 and 7G. So it's right. very, very rapidly happening things. And of course, for the general consumer, and I meet so many Swedes every day, they don't agree with you and me, uh, and they don't agree with this lady in Greece. Uh, they just want to have good fun with their cell phones in the underground and on buses and trams and so on. Right. They, you know, they don't even see the trees or bushes or flowers or insects or birds or anything. No, they think you're not modern. So, yeah, doc Dr. Consumer. Johansson, don't you want to download more movies per minute? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, you know, I am not interested to begin with. And furthermore, I don't even have uh, a downloader or as you would call it, a cell phone. Right. Uh, so, no, I'm not interested in that. And, and um, just recently I was um, approached over the telephone. I have an ordinary wide telephone. Uh, and there was a lady from the main operator in Sweden saying that um, she wanted to offer me new streaming services exactly for what you say to yeah. download quickly <clears throat> movies, uh, videos, uh, TV programs and so on. And I said, no, thank you. And then I was about to hang up, but she was still um, uh, with me, you know, so I said, wait, wait, uh, I have a streaming service for you, I said to the lady. <laughs> and she said, what? what do you mean? What about going out into real life? And just look at it, you know. And then she actually laughed and said, well, a lot more people should really do exactly that. They are glued to their smartphones. And as you know, the smartphones have a tendency to kind of box you in and minimize yeah. Uh, the way you're reasoning, thinking, dreaming, etc. Uh, and um, uh, they, they are called smartphones, but they seem to very often dumb people down. Uh, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and that's, um, that's scary uh, from, from a lot of educational point of view. And also um, to have reflective minds uh, rather than people just repeating what they saw on Facebook. And we all know mm -hmm. now how very manipulated Facebook, Instagram, and that kind of things are, yeah. Google, et cetera. Uh, so it's not really a source of independent knowledge. Uh, and uh, I say that, um, at least for me, real life is enough. It's so much out there. And right now, we have... Um, slight, slight edge of spring and uh, uh, approaching Sweden. We feel it's not very cold. It's only cold right now. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and the light is coming back and uh, you hear birds singing, etc. Uh, but um, I am very concerned about the enormous reduction of pollinators. And uh, maybe we talked about it last time. I'm also, um, I think you say biker. I, I uh, go out and, and run my motorcycle in the summertime mm -hmm. and I meet a lot of bikers and everyone says the same namely if you go back like 50 years and you went out the summer evening when you came back you had to clean yourself yeah and, and not just from pollinators obviously no. i mean kinds of pollinators people some people have some realization that pollinators might man matter because they want honey yeah but the other bugs if they disappear that's yeah. not a good thing if you no. want to have life on the planet yeah. right and you know now when i go out i could be out for four or five hours maybe there could be a single spot of one insect Wow. Uh, so it's right in front of us. And I'm so thankful to Diana Cordes having done this um, investigation. And, and she has pointed out herself that she is not a scientist. She's just observing nature. But mm -hmm. as you remember, that's what uh, Rockel Carson did when she later wrote her very, very famous book, Silent Spring. Right. So maybe Diana Cordes will be the future uh, Rocco Carson, who knows? Yeah, and, some um, I've, I've talked with a lot, you know, both sides of the political spectrum have their own tunnel vision, you know, uh, and then they've both gone 
pretty much completely insane at this point. But the ones who consider themselves on the conservative side, many of them have talked to me about how silly Rachel Carson was. And if there was an environmental emergency, the world would have ended in 1970. And since it didn't, she was wrong. Yeah. And, you know, the- well, unfortunately, she was very right. And what happened then was, as you know, very quickly, extensive and total bans of uh, mercury, um, uh, um, um, do you say, baited uh, seeds. They were uh, abandoned completely. And that reversed very quickly over uh, a number of years, uh, the situation to a much better one. But now we are back again, you know, and I see in summertime, it's not only pollinators, as you say, it's all insects. Right. And of course, with that also, you have a reduction in different types of birds, especially smaller birds. Yeah. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and bats and things, I, too. You know, when I ask people, um, do you want to have it like this? And, and they are looking at their smartphone and they look up and no, 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 no. What you are doing is extremely important and very meaningful. Then you continue. And yeah. Say, and I'll get back to Google. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't you please, before you go back to the smartphone, just give me like $1 per year or something. Yeah, right. And it's less than 1%, less than 1% of people that actually say, oh, 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 oh yeah, I could do that. And of course, their gifts are extremely important. Don't get me wrong, but we need more. We need a general awakening. And uh, I'm hoping that we can achieve this. Uh, but uh, some evenings, I would say, I'm pretty low uh, and, and um, feel yeah. depressed. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, on the surface, it doesn't look really positive outlook for the future at the moment. You know, so... Very true. But, I mean, we shouldn't forget that there are a lot of good news, good things happening. They rarely reach mainstream media, but there are other news channels. And there is one called Future Crunch that will tell you a lot of extremely good news, especially from uh, continents like Africa, uh, South America. Central What's that? Futurecrunch.com? Future, yeah, exactly. And um, that kind of inject hope in you, uh, because at least here in Sweden, when you watch uh, the news on the television or uh, listen to the radio, it's very depressive, especially now with the Russia-Ukraine debacle, you know. Uh, Not only is it I, negative, it's also inaccurate. Inaccurate <laughs> and very negative. And I heard today yeah. when I had my lunch, the table next to me, there were a bunch of men in their 40s, and they all said, no, I have stopped looking at the TV news. I've stopped listening to the radio. I right. just cannot take more, you know. Right. And I told them also, it's interesting, since I'm a neuroscientist, mm -hmm. see how your um, brain kind of gets overloaded or satisfied or whatever you would call saturated, maybe it's the best term. It can take negativity to a certain level, but then it goes blank. You know, it doesn't want to have more. And uh, I, I'm so glad that there are at least some trials that uh, there are good, positive news as well. Because after all, there are so many good people out there mm -hmm. all over the world trying to do their best, you know, and with no with no dreams of uh, gigantic profits or power control or anything like that. Right. They just want to help people. Um, so Yeah, I, I think that phenomenon of brain saturation is really interesting. And it, it, it looks like some kind of an emotional uh, self-preservation instinct. Yeah. It's like there's too much of a, a sense of being threatened and everything being, you know, it, it's fear. Yeah. And, and unknown fear that you don't understand is the worst because your mind blows it up into it's just so bad, like forget it, you can't handle it at all. No, it and right. so the response is to pull away from awareness, Yeah, no, which I is agree. exactly what the, you know, <clears throat> it's a complex issue and this segues right into what I was thinking we could talk about in the role of science and just good, good, motivated people with respect to the current world situation. And when I really started digging into it, 
decades ago, what I uncovered, well, first of all, I ran into the barrier that you talked about emotionally. It was very threatening. And I had to do something with my mind or I wouldn't have been able to go into it fully. And I felt like in, in keeping with a scientific perspective, you can't only want to know part of the picture or else you're going to get misleading results. And I wanted to see where it was coming from. And I found out the reason that we're taught never to acknowledge what they call conspiracy theories is because the essence of it is a gigantic multi-layered conspiracy. And you're not supposed to realize that. It's supposed to just be haphazard. And I found out nothing happens by chance. I haven't proven that and published it. But everything I see looks like there is no such thing as chance. It's just variables we may not be aware of. And to find those and understand them is the challenge. Well, there's so much difference between how science is going now in general with some exceptions, like the work that you're doing, I think, is spectacular. But in, in a large part, science has degenerated into repeating acceptable information and believing government agencies. And it's not just science, it's in knowledge in general. So what I was finding is that this is an organized, systematic agenda of destruction. And it's not, it's not for money. No. And it's very interesting that you say this because, you know, I started at the Karolinska Institute, which is really at the pinnacle of the best of all the best science. It hands out, as you know, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine and yeah. has an extremely good reputation and can even compete with places like MIT, um, Harvard, Yale, right. Oxford, Cambridge, and so on. But, you know, I came there in 1973. Mm -hmm. Most of your viewers and listeners were probably not even born then. Probably and, not, yeah. Yeah, and after a few months. Um, I re remember it struck me very hard. I was actually standing by the elevator to go down and go home. And then it struck me and I sort of realized that it was kind of a tone and something in the background that shouldn't be there. And it was about that I realized that no one was actually working for the benefit of mankind or for the benefit at least of sick, ill patients and their relatives and for people with disabilities. No, they were all working for something completely different. And that spelled career. They s were working for their own progress to become um, <sighs> rich, wealthy, important professors, blah, 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 all of them. Right, them. And, right, um, right often driven by a background agenda from the pharmaceutical or technical industry. Well, because those things go together, that yeah. furthers your career. Yeah, and, and I remember, you know, I had in my whole previous life as a child and teenager uh, been living with a very ill mother and she had got help from various medical doctors. Mm -hmm. And so that had um, formed me very much into believing in um, unconditional type of research uh, and uh, independent and controlled uh, with the only sole uh, aim to help people in need. And I realized that no one is actually working for that kind of uh, aim. That's exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, real scientists have become very rare. Yeah. And, and the motive, what you're researching for yeah, it's and, obviously and, supposed to be the benefit of humanity. Yeah, but it's not. Um, and there has been so very many scandals at the Karolinska Institute and at other places right. along those lines. But at the same time, it's interesting that you say uh, what you say, you know, the Karolinska Institute consists of something around 5,000 employees or together. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, I, I don't want to call myself a good scientist, but the scientists believing in another system. We found each other. And out of the 5,000, I would say there were less than 50. Yeah. Maybe even less than 25 that would go together. And they were all 
um, uh, or what you say, they were all losers, failures, in the sense that they didn't climb any ladders, they didn't get these huge uh, recommendations and uh, uh, big amounts of funds and, and mon monetary funds, etc. And right. they were far, far down on the floor, uh, trying to do their very best. Uh, but we found each other, and I still have a very good relationship with a few of them. Unfortunately, some of them have died over the years. And, right. but, um, and, and every time we met, um, I mean, your program is called Lost Arts Radio. Right. I mean, we could have called ourselves Lost Arts Science. Yeah, and, it's yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. And I'm still, I'm still very surprised. And, you know, when I lecture uh, to the general public, I often compare scientists being some kind of a mental fire brigade with the ordinary <laughs> fire brigade putting out fires in society. And if we would use the same kind of system for them, well, then uh, the world would have been on fire for a long time ago, because uh, if we should always have a career sense, uh, yeah. then of course uh, you would start cutting corners, you would um, uh, produce um, false data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. After just mention, finally, uh, Paolo Macchiarini, the enormous scandal at the Karolinska Institute and Karolinska Hospital, um, um, uh, surgeon that actually actively killed the people. Uh, and this is just recent. It, it, um, this year, mm -hmm. they're going what's, to be... What's the context of that situation? Because yeah. most well, people here haven't heard about it. No, he dreamt about... Um, uh, repairing um, uh, air tubes uh, in uh, leading down to your lungs, uh -huh. the plastic ones, the trachea, um, and it was just completely rubbish. Uh, but he managed, you know, to fool hundreds and maybe thousands of people, fool uh, editorial boards, fool uh, editors, uh, referees, etc., etc. And he spent, according to the newspapers here in Sweden, more than 50 million US dollars on nothing. Hmm. Um, whereas people like myself, we didn't even have 50 US dollars to play for, you know. So, right, right. And it was a tremendous <laughs> scandal. And if people are interested, there's a lot of it being written, and they could just Google Paolo Macchiarini. Macchiarini, <clears throat> that starts with an M. M, yes. What's the rest? A, C, C, H, Mac A, I, R, uh, I, N, I, I think, something like that. Okay, Macchiarini. Yeah, and Paolo. In <clears throat> Paolo is his first name. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, it sounds like he had a problem with mental illness, basically, right? <laughs> Well, difficult to say, you know, but uh, um, th that uh, <clears throat> certainly made an enormous mark on the Karolinska Institute. And now the point is coming. People expressed an enormous surprise. Um, even within the academia in Stockholm, within the hospital, the mm -hmm. healthcare, I <clears throat> did not. I had seen similar scandals. Uh, being um, unresolved and not being uh, publicly um, uh, um, presented over mm -hmm. decades. I had seen so much such things going on in the name of career, in the name of cutting corners, where suddenly anything and everything is all right. Um, so, so isn't this, <clears throat> if you look for a cause... Would you say it's reasonable to surmise that it's coming from lack of self-awareness on a deep level? Because if we know who we are, yeah. then we know we're connected to each other yeah. on a really deep level beyond yeah. the physical. And helping somebody else is identical to helping yourself. Yeah. And if you know that, 
you can't do this destructive kind of science because you would feel right away that it wasn't ethical. Yeah. Not according to a list of rules, but according to reality. Exactly. And, and if you still are blind, I mean, <clears throat> a guy like Paolo Maccherini, he had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people around him. Mm -hmm. They should have been able to say, stop. And so no, this is a consciousness problem. Yeah. And, you know, we are talking about a situation so obvious so you don't need to be a medical doctor, a scientist, or anything. No. You can immediately realize that no way, you cannot do this. You're talking about being a awake human being. Exactly. With your morality and ethics. And yeah. Effect. Yeah, and I'm saying that's intrinsic. Even if you were illiterate and never read a book about ethics, you just feel it if you're awake. And if you're hypnotized... You think you can get ahead by hurting somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Which apparently the rulers of the world are believing that at this point. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So the other thing about science that requires more than just the usual reasoning track is the issue of variables. Because w the difference between a lab environment where you have one variable and everything else held constant to see by logic what that variable does and then write about it. It, it. You go out the door of the lab and even with the bug issue where you don't have the bugs anymore, there's a lot going on. It's partly EMF, it's partly pesticides, it's partly GMOs, you know, all these different things, pollution. And you, you have to use some kind of a deeper analytical technique when you've got infinite unknown variables. How did you? How have you dealt with that? Um, I mean, this is extremely interesting because I have coined an expression saying that very often reality cannot um, reproduce the laboratory findings. Right. Often you hear the opposite, but um, you can have observations and results in a laboratory. That just doesn't fit reality at all. Because there are unknown influencing variables that you're not yeah. aware of. Yeah. And, and uh, the question is, is the laboratory the map or is reality the map of reality? Uh, and of course, um, the answer is obvious. And you need, as you say, to go out into reality. Again, like this woman, Diana Cordes, and mm -hmm. others have done and start trying to understand. And I mean, it's not a failure to make mistakes. You right. have through trial and error to test <clears throat> and build a new hypothesis based upon the previous observations and results. Uh, but of course, if you're career driven, then most of your mental channels are completely blocked and closed. Right. And needs to be opened up, you know. You just and, ask your benefactors, what, what do you want me to come up with for yeah. results? Right? <laughs> you know, you hit actually a weak spot in my life because I was in a situation with one of the most famous and biggest uh, trade unions in Sweden and in Scandinavia, actually. And to my extreme uh, surprise, they told me that they wanted to decide the outcome of my studies. Well, at least they were honest about they it. They were honest. This <laughs> was in a, a meeting behind closed doors, but they were uh, honest. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you get that odd feeling that, oops, now I misunderstood it. <laughs> say that again, right? Yeah. Could you please repeat and say again? Mm -hmm. And I remember one of these trade union guys, he said, you know, let I see that you don't quite get this, you know, you, you should come to my, um, to my uh, flat uh, in Gamla Stan, in the old town of Stockholm, and we should sit down and I will go through every details you understand. They call that re-education. Yeah, and I went <laughs> there, you know, and I sat there and the whole time, and I don't want to talk badly about him because he's not with us any longer, but I constantly felt that no, this is not candid camera. This is bigger than candid camera. This is 
complete fraud at the highest political and economic level. And I don't want to have anything to do with that, you know. And I told them. And that was also the complete end of support from them, uh, right. as well as monetary support, completely gone immediately, you know. Well, he but, probably couldn't even afford to look at what you were saying. Probably because not. that would call into question yeah. everything yeah. that he was based on. Yeah. Right. And and I, I lack the proper English words, but he was he was a mental bully in the sense that he constantly came back to and said, Yeah, 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 yeah. You scientists, you have your ideas, you know, but from reality point of view, we right. must look upon it in this way, and we must take into account the effects on the working market and the, on the economy and so on. And yeah. said, I'm not employed to do that. Uh, it's an intricately justified system. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and, and I realized also if this was the way they approached me, how many others had been approached in the same way and instead saying, yes, thank you, I will do as you say. I'd of course. Yeah, it would further know. their career. Yeah. And they could pay their bills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's still, it's still a moment in my life I have a hard time actually believing. It's kind of a science fiction moment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not science and it's not fiction. It's something more sinister, I would say. It is. And, you know, what I see at this point is that it's intricately planned. These yeah. guys that are educated in that system, like the man that you're talking about, um, that's orchestrated by levels far above him. Yeah. And he's just finding out that he gets rewarded if he sticks to that belief system. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if anyone is from Sweden listening to your program right now. And, and they are. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then they would have noticed something I said, namely, he had a flat in Gamla Stan in the old town, and only very, very, very rich people can afford that. Oh, oh. He was from the trade unions. They are not sort of naturally rich. Yeah. But he had played his cards right. That's for sure. Right. And, and, and he was teaching other people how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I, and it, people like to be rich. I mean, it, it oh, it's, yeah, of course. It's, yeah. it's a lot more fun than being poor. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I mean, oh, my grandmother on my mother's side and my mother and father, unfortunately, had taught me Christian values. Yeah. So I couldn't go along with his ideas. What kind of values? Um, I mean, all the basic values to never cheat or lie or fool anyone and always mm -hmm. only talk about uh, the real thing and uh, being honest etc and when he suggested that we should fake everything i couldn't believe my ears i just couldn't believe my ears you know? yeah 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 i think those values that you learned are basically timeless yeah. You know, whether anybody believes in them or not, they still operate. Yeah, indeed. And, and I think people are short-sighted in the sense that they don't see the operation of a deeper system, which has been called karma or reaping what you sow or whatever. They, they think that, well, that just happens when you die. That's not true. No. Things start to happen right away. And in fact, one of the prices you pay for that kind of action is yeah. a dulling of your own vision yeah and that has bad consequences and, and but you know it's interesting because aftonbladet the biggest tabloid in scandinavia i think mm -hmm. actually they wrote an article many years ago about me it wasn't to do with this story but with other um, issues and the health effects of electromagnetic fields and so on mm -hmm. and they started the whole article by saying that Ole Johansson, he is 100% serious and honest. And those are his um, greatest assets and his greatest problems. And yeah, standing in the way of what your career could become. Yeah, yeah. and first I didn't <laughs> quite understand what they meant, but then I realized, yeah, of course, it would be so much easier 
to just look sideways now and then. Yeah, the that's a powerful there. motive. I mean, yeah. just drop this silly, you know, addiction to honesty yeah. and you won't be asking for a dollar a year because you'll no. be flooded with money. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my next life, I will do it the same way. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> So right now, you know, it seems like we're at a test period. Things have, w what I see as this intentional orchestrated sequence leading up to the destruction of not just humans, but all life, which is well underway at this point. And it looks like it's coming to more and more of a flashpoint. And I keep looking for what we can do to turn it around. And, and one of the things that I'm seeing it's just like you're trying to discuss it with your friend who was telling you how to give up your ethics and succeed. <laughs> you can't really get very far with logical discussions. But I think the, there are potentials in other areas, and this is way outside the normal box, but science is supposed to be open to things that are not what they're used to, right? Yeah. So what... It'd be interesting to see what you think about this, but we know people have started to realize that cell towers and cell phones and smart meters and things like that, they put out this frequency. It's a radiated frequency, and you can't see it or smell it or taste it or touch it or anything. And it's real and it's powerful. It's at least potentially powerful, and not only at the higher uh, power levels, but sometimes very low doses can be very harmful as well, right? You found that. And I'm saying that that's examples of negative frequencies. People like Barry Troer have talked about weaponization of that in Second World War and the development further after. And I would say that the frequencies that are being used for cell phones and all these wireless devices don't need to be as highly weaponized as they are. That That's not just by chance. But there are not only negative frequencies, there are healing frequencies. You know, there are frequencies coming out of the sun, for example, that are not as mainstream pharma companies like to say deadly. They're kind of essential for life on earth. And so frequencies can be helpful. And what I found is that human beings and other life forms generate frequencies. And they seem to be tied to health status and emotional status. And, if, and those are not, I don't know of any major studies that have really even looked at that at all. And what it looks like to me is that those could be focused and they could be a means of reaching the people with the levers of power that seem intent on pulling them all the way to destruction. So I'd like to see somebody interested in that. Well, I mean, in Sweden, we say that you're kicking in open doors. Uh, and that's what you do now, Richard, because on my uh, fundraiser call, one of the areas we would love to investigate mm -hmm. is what we call frequency medicine, uh, meaning mm -hmm. both, as you say, the impact of negative frequencies and negative energies, as well as positive healing ones. Right. There are so much anecdotal evidence out there, especially from the former Eastern European states, the former yeah. Soviet Union, but also from United States, Canada, etc. And people have tried in an uncontrolled uh, and, and uh, non-independent uh, way uh, to understand. And I would like to do some very simple studies yeah, and I do have contact with a person that has equipment, etc. But uh, again, and I know I'm sounding like the classical parrot, you know, we don't have the money. So if people want to go to the fundraiser call on Honeywire, uh, they can do that and, and um, send us whatever they have. And I repeat, uh, no sum is too small. Uh, yeah, I, every single dollar, you know. This is like a website for the fundraiser or something like that? Exactly. And I have a friend who has helped me since I don't know anything about computers. He has helped me to put together a very nice um, page uh, where you can go and uh, here it is. It's 
uh, honeywire as one word dot org. Okay, h o n e y w i r e dot org. Yeah, slash research. Okay, and what what is on that site? And um, there you find uh, um, um, donate button. You can call it. So you can go directly either to our research bank account or to a PayPal account. And most people use the PayPal. Uh, and it's very convenient also at our end. And uh, so you can try it. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, that you mentioned, uh, I just want to finish writing that down. Um, you mentioned lots of anecdotal uh, evidence. I, I, I send it now on the email to you as well. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, Sorry, we'll put it in there. You. Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, what I've been doing on the just exploratory level outside the lab is saying, what is a, you know, I feel a kind of time sensitive urgency to this thing. Like one thing that science, even well meaning science, tends to do is move very, very slowly. And the idea is that they want to be meticulous, not misinterpret results, not jump to conclusions, you know, but in what they call the real world, you know, what's going on outside, um, things aren't moving slowly, especially right now. And it looks like it's the late stages of a program that I've traced back thousands of years at this point. And it, the people running it think that they're reaching their conclusion. And their conclusion is basically finishing a ceremonial sacrifice of life on earth, which is not a good plan because we are the life on earth and it would be better not to have that happen. Yeah. But talking to these people is considerably worse than when you tried to talk to the person about, you know, how to operate in science circles, because these top ones are very dark and they're malevolent. They're satanic, not in a religious sense, but in a real sense. And I mean, I don't even think it's coming from the human level at the top, but it needs to be turned around to get a different result. And so the reason I bring up this issue of radiation and frequency coming out of life forms related to the energy healing that you're talking about, but more on the level of interaction all the time, that we're all connected to each other through these frequency fields at any distance. And that gets into the quantum physics area of uh, quantum entanglement and the idea that the speed of light in Newtonian physics being a limit of speed is only a limit within that paradigm. And that there are other ways that communication is instantaneous, not even measurable in speed. And that our frequencies affect each other on that level but they're not focused and they're not even conscious most of the time. People's thoughts are running all over the place and their emotions too. In fact, most people aren't even aware of their emotions and their thoughts, just the surface ones. And so if that, the idea is if that would become conscious and directable, anybody who is basically consciousness or spirit at their essence, which is everybody and other life forms too, could be consciously reached on a way that there's no blocking. They would block you on the intellectual level, but they wouldn't even be aware of the influence on the frequency level. And on that level, there are a reality of what's called blessing and cursing. So we're doing that all the time unconsciously. And the idea is if you focus that and learned how to bless, which is like an ultimate form of the energy healing that you're talking about, and we direct it to all of these elite unknown figures at the top who don't even have publicly known names because they are essentially, they came from the same source that we did. They just made some really serious mistakes um, that we could change the situation in the time that we have left. And I'm looking at what are the so-called anecdotal indications that there may be substance to this. Yeah. One of them is like the experiments with water that we've talked about. And even whether or not they've been published very much, there's a lady named Veda Austin that's doing them now. And we've had her on the show. She's published a lot of 
photographs. YouTube doesn't recognize it's a threat, which is not very smart on their side, but they don't think any of this stuff has any real meaning or effect. And so you can see these beautiful designs that the water itself has come up with. That's one clue. Another one is in China, there are these doctors called the already done doctors, where people before it was too dangerous to travel, you know, like now with the, all the stuff that they're doing. Uh, people went there on what's called uh, medical tourism, I think they call it. Yeah. And there's a, a documented case on video from um, a man, I'll remember his name. Um, and a lady went there with advanced uh, bladder cancer, I think it was bladder cancer. And they laid her on a bed, this is on the video, and they put an ultrasound machine over her bladder, lower abdomen. And these three Chinese doctors stood behind the bed and they were saying something in Chinese over and over again. And what I learned later is it wasn't what they were saying. It was the, just like in the water experiment, is can you project focused emotion like it's real for you, not just a word? They were saying in Chinese, already done. And within a real-time uh, window of 30 minutes, the tumor disappeared. And you wow. could watch it disappearing yeah. on the screen. And then one more that I'll mention, then I'll shut up. I don't mean to talk too long here, but um, there's an old Chinese, or not Chinese, but Hawaiian tradition called Ho'oponopono. Have you heard of that? Yes, I have. Yes. And this famous Dr. Hugh Lan was using it in a mental hospital which just by chance we happen to be living in a giant mental hospital right now. And this was a small one that he was working with. And um, they asked him to deal with the violent patients there. And he asked for their files from an office outside the hospital with pictures. And he was able to focus on those and repeat four phrases. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. And thank you. And these people went home, and they weren't mentally ill anymore. Those are just clues. And no one has scaled it up to the needed level or really drawn the conclusions of what it means and then demonstrate. But I think that needs to be done right now. I agree to 100%, <laughs> you know. And don't forget about the Israelis who have used for a number of years dolphins uh, to um, treat this, maybe not the right word, I would rather say heal yeah. children uh, in their teens. And right. the children are allowed to swim with the dolphins. Uh, and, you know, autistic children have a very hard time to come forward and uh, express themselves and so on. Mm -hmm. And after like half a year to a year, they are completely changed. And I have had the great honor to swim with dolphins. Wow. And um, if you don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, we'll tell everybody not to tell anybody. Exactly. No one. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if, you, uh, if you have the honor to swim with dolphins in open sea, mm -hmm. um, you will not be the same person when you reach shore again. Uh, you uh, will be changed. And I will say that the dolphin, they kind of reach out to your brain and um, change it. They change it. And very many people have uh, expressed the same kind of experiences. And it's extremely powerful. And there is a very direct communication. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you get kind of addicted. You want to stay forever. Exactly. Yeah. And that th and that's a clue that we could stay forever by making our own world like that. Yeah. A and mm -hmm. I know for instance famous uh, including famous American scientists that were doing experiments using dolphins uh, as uh, experimental animals and when they realized the level of communication yeah. they just couldn't keep the animals trapped any longer. Exactly. Them, you know, they just couldn't. Yeah. As, as, as you and I, we could never uh, imprison anyone against their will because we would feel it. And, and, and if the rulers of the world became self-aware, 
they couldn't do that to us either. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I agree. And I mean, we would love to do experiments along these lines. And um, oh, we are just sitting here. I, I don't would, see your it's, rolling thumbs, but kind of, you know. Real science is super exciting. And yeah. what I've done so far, you know, with no budget and, no, you know, no way to really set it up yet, but you could, is walking along the street um, and cars are passing going the other way. And just staring straight ahead, you know, in the usual zombie state and maybe listening to the radio or whatever. And I project at the person, um, not just the whole Pono Pono, I love you, I'm sorry, etc. But the feeling, which is really looks like the operative thing that sets the frequency. Wow, this is my long lost friend. I'm so happy to see you again. Uh, and the actual feeling of that being true. And every time I've been able to do that, the person who's glaring straight ahead and why doesn't this car in front of me get out of the way and, you know, and like to tear them to pieces as soon as I have a chance and the usual thought patterns, you know, and, and they'll turn aside and they'll smile and they'll wave. Yeah. This is a big deal. Yeah. It's not just once in a while. And with animals, it works too. Yeah. You know, I've been walking on the trail and somebody will pre approach from maybe 100 yards away wearing their five masks and being safe and responsible and everything. And they'll have a dog. And um, I project at the dog that I'm sitting right next to it, patting the dog, telling it what a great dog it is. And the dog will look at me. And then by the time they get close, it'll pull the people over, you know, even though they're terrified of being closer than six feet to somebody and, and want to be patted. Those are clues. What could we do with that? I, I have exactly the same experiences, and particularly with dogs, cats, and similar animals. Yes. Uh, I'm very impressed also by these television celebrities. I should just put the cable into here. And these uh, television celebrities like <laughs> Cesar Milan, uh, who is really a psychologist when it comes to dogs mm -hmm. the way they approach very angry dogs and calm them within minutes right and the owners haven't been able to do it in a year and there is a communication there and i would love actually to be allowed to um, use uh, people like caesar milan and yes. investigate what kind of powers do they use and how do they use them and there is so much interesting there that could then be transferred into mm -hmm. everyday life situations right and we can also meet each other in a much more mature elder adult way sometimes i see at least in sweden people are nowadays very aggressive you know and they're stressed and they're mm -hmm. fiddling with their smartphones and right right it seems to be taking an enormous toll on them and yeah. where, where went the relaxed farmer, you know, farmer John, where is he nowadays? Right, right. Yeah, I, I think the potential is not only with the people that you're physically in touch with, but the whole Pono Pono experience showed that you don't even have to be in the same physical vicinity. No, yeah. Exactly. And if you can, they used pictures to tune into the person as if they were there. Because it looks like it's the the reality of the emotional state that does it. Yeah. And I think even the people at high positions of power, and certainly the ones underneath them, the servants, like what about all the police yeah. that are beating up people for not having the right mask yeah. on? What if you could reach them like you could reach an, a higher being like a dog yeah. and that would respond right away? Yeah. Because the dog is not, looking through all the fog of all this intellectual ego stuff and everything. It's just feeling yeah. people could be reached. I, I just think the potential is great, but I don't think it should take 50 years to go through the usual sequence. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And, and as I say again, you know, with the kind of needle point studies aiming for the core of the questions, mm -hmm. uh, which I have seen so many examples of when it comes to Nobel Prizes, for instance, they are often surprisingly simple and uh, simple um, uh, results, <laughs> simple investigations 
but yeah. done by the right persons at the right time using right. the right um, thinking, the right. right reflections. So what happens if you get money at the honey... Um, wire. <laughs> honey wire slash yeah. research.org. I mean, slash. we do get now and then a few dollars, and thank you so much, I say, to anyone that has uh, sent us support. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more uh, because science is... Um, something that needs to be covered uh, in extenso. All the details needs to be covered, and that costs money, you know. And uh, right. I, I, when I lecture about this, I tell people that here in Sweden, if you run a medium-sized food store, you need approximately a uh, hundred thousand U.S. dollars per week. Uh, and uh, in science, in biomedical science. Uh, people need in the order of ten thousand U.S. dollars per week. Mm -hmm. so it is cheap, but at the same time, if you don't have the money, right, then you cannot do anything. Of course, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's called cheap or not if you don't have no. any money. Yeah, but talking about the six feet distancing, I saw this fantastic little baby uh, lying on its back, and it had a small sweater and on it it said a t-shirt and they didn't keep any six feet <laughs> 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 I, 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 I <laughs> pretty safe guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is great in yeah. a lot of ways to but you know now tonight i will um, lie in my bed because here it's seven o'clock in the evening yeah and then when i go to bed you know i will lie there and cry of course because richard you have pointed to the most important of the studies we want to do. And I get constantly stressed by the fact that we just cannot do it. Uh, and um, not yet, but you know, <laughs> there are higher levels of this whole situation that, you know, as we say, in si any honest scientist who has some awareness knows that most variables are unknown. Yeah. You know, we don't assume that we see everything there is to see no. and or even have an awareness of it. And if you take this quantum physics, you know, basic idea that the experimenter affects the experiment, yeah. right? And then you go beyond that to the experimenter creates their own reality. It's just that it takes a certain amount of focus and inner quiet to get, even start to get in touch with that. Yeah. Where that looks like it leads, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'm aware of what outside world events, and I think we need to jump ahead. We need to be brave enough to <clears throat> take the short route to something that's not just going to be, oh, that's really interesting. It has to change the world yeah, away from the suicidal path that's being led on. And what it looks like to me <clears throat> is if you jump further than just the frequency communication, it looks to me like what we call solid reality. Even, even this is true on Newtonian physics level, if you know the real proportions of the particles in an atom, yeah. it's mostly space. Yeah. And it comes in and out of physical existence, especially the electrons. And if you take that further, it looks like each one of us is actually projecting our reality in consciousness and that we're wearing these costumes that appear to be who we are and they're not they're just briefly used clothes and the mind is not who we are it's a interface with the information that defines so-called physical reality yeah and what we are is the pure consciousness that's looking through those things and the senses and the brain and everything as windows but if you get rid of the false identity and start to experience yourself not as a belief because that won't do it at all it has to be actual experience then that means that we're projecting situations not just events and that is really interesting because the world problem is a situation yeah and all the people that are acting in it are essentially characters in our movie yeah but I'm just one of the characters in your movie talking with you right now. And I'm saying, I'm a character in your movie. You have the projector in your hands, or more specifically in the mind. And if that can learn to change, 
then any situation can be altered yeah. to the benefit of everybody. Yeah. And anybody could do this. So I'd like to see some experiments with that. And if there's not a lot of money, what can we do before there's a lot of money? Well, I think we can do quite a lot. And I think people are trying to. And uh, as you said before, it's so interesting. I read that um, uh, any matter, I mean, like this laptop I'm sitting at or the mm -hmm. table here, uh, more than 99.99% <laughs> is empty space. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but when we knock on it, it feels very non-empty, I would say. Your, your senses are tuned yeah. to that yeah. frequency, so it yeah, appears exactly. solid. Yeah, uh, and of course, for any physicist, this is child's play. They know this nowadays. Good, but for yeah. a regular human being, it's surprising to tell them some of these basic facts, and hopefully that will seed some thoughts into their mind, and they start thinking. But I always tell people... You just have to put down your smartphone. Otherwise, you can never become a smart person. Yeah, you, you can take a lot of guidance from the authorities because yeah. they clearly want you to live in your smartphone. Yeah, yeah. So that's a confirmation that you have to get away from it. Yeah. Uh, that's also a very interesting point. I remember some, well, what, 20 years ago or so, uh, one of the most powerful and rich persons in Sweden he was interviewed and then he was asked what was the best to be so very rich and powerful. And then he pointed at the reporter's cell phone and said, well, I don't have to use one of those. Right, right, right. That's telling, you know, that's telling, I would say. And remember, it's not bad to be rich and powerful. No, it's no. only like what Spider-Man said. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. You could use it for good. It's possible. Yeah, of course. One of the things I thought is to invite billionaires to let them know we're looking if there's any of you guys left that have a sense of wanting to do good during your brief lifetime. Yeah. If so, we want to talk to you. Yeah. Even if you don't want to help us at all, there's all these other places that you need to know about yeah, exactly. that really need immediate help. That's a real good one, you know. Wow. Why don't we set up a, a free billionaire consulting service <laughs> where they don't have to help us? No. <laughs> but look, we need a new education system. We need a new medical system. We need all these things. And they could make a massive impact oh, yeah, yeah. by starting a parallel society before the old one is gone. But, you know, then you come back to the classical political question. Uh, do you want to have informed and educated people as citizens? Well, the people that think that they're going to, you know, get ahead by serving the ceremonial sacrifice, they obviously don't want that. Because oh. if the sacrificial animal wakes up and said, wait a minute, I'm a sacrificial animal, that's not yeah. really a good situation. Yeah. That would be unpleasant. Yeah. But but if there are any people with resources, yeah. which is what I mean by billionaires, yeah. that are not fully hypnotized and are wishing they could do something good, why don't we try to reach them? You know, oh, that would be super, super, super interesting. You know, yeah. And then if their friends see that it's not fatal to actually be good, it might spread. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thought. Oh, it's a good thought, you know, I like that. So what are you doing now to try to find support? And if you got it, what do you think you would start with? Well, I'm spreading the word. And uh, so people would uh, sit down and think about supporting us. And I send them the fundraiser call as much as I can. Okay. And, and then, of course, if we would get sufficient funding to do things, I think... Um, uh, some of these areas would be more acute. Um, frequency medicine, definitely. Also to expand uh, the support and knowledge around the functional disability called electrohypersensitivity. Right. And then, uh, effects on sperm cells and fertility, not mm. only in humans, but also in other animals. Right. Uh, impacts on bacteria i think we talked about that last time yeah and, and of course what we talked about today impacts on different insects especially pollinators of different sorts mm -hmm. and wow we we are like 
Formula One cars waiting for the green light. And we are waiting and waiting and waiting, you know. Yeah. You know? Uh, but maybe after this program, we will. We, we need to share this with as many people with networks yeah. as possible, yeah. you know, and we can, we can give you the links to do that too. Yeah. Individuals, but some individuals have a lot of contacts. Yeah, indeed, indeed. If we let them know what to do. Share the information as much as you can and yeah. tell people to really read it and look at it and think. And mm. uh, with all due respect, I mean, there are so many good things you can uh, support. And yeah. have to ask yourself uh, if there are areas that maybe are more, as you said, Richard, acute and with a dramatic, mm -hmm. quickly decline of pollinators, for instance, there is no yeah. time left to wait. Right, exactly. And I think even though we talk about frequencies, which is an area outside this narrow band that the senses perceive, it's, it's affecting everything Yeah, all the time. And it's not just to stop using cell phones. It's what are the positive applications? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of the people just talk about negative impact of frequencies because it's more obvious, but the positive ones could be used as well. Oh, very much so. Yes, indeed. Right. So, well, I appreciate the time very much. And I hope if, if anybody wants to get in touch with you for this kind of thing, yeah. how, do they, how do they do that? Um, I mean, if they want to have more information, they could always email me and uh, maybe you can send the email address to them. And, okay. And that's, uh, that's the simplest and quickest way. And uh, right. I ask them to keep their email letters as short as ever possible oh yeah you can get I drowned get in that every day and right i don't want to miss out on important information or questions and um so what please, about that website that you mentioned the the honey wire does that have okay. a, a contact uh, form or anything uh, no they don't uh, so there's okay. only for the economic support Okay. Uh, but the, via the email, they could definitely ask me whatever they want to ask me. Is there a website that has most of your work on it or anything like that if people no, want to look at it? No, I don't it? have any website because I don't have money and time to produce one. And uh, again, if people want to have detailed information, it's easier. They just uh, write a short email <clears throat> note to me. And okay. for instance, a few weeks ago, I got a very, very interesting question from a person a private person uh, whether our experiments with um, uh, honeybees and uh, bumblebees and other pollinators other insects would those experiments harm the insects mm -hmm. and i said that no we don't have any intention to harm them but the question is if they are already harmed now by the impact of all the artificial uh, so it's uh, it's a very very crucial question, but we don't have any such intention ourselves, of course not. Uh, but um, maybe they are. And I saw a few days ago, for instance, uh, here in Sweden, veterinarians have reported a strong reduction in sperm cell quality in dogs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as we already have in humans. You know, so now it's spreading. And right. again, you know, Richard, I feel. I feel stressed, to be honest, you know, I feel stressed. I feel like I'm standing, looking out through a window, seeing uh, a new landscape with a lot yeah. of questions and answers, and I'm not allowed to go out into it. And You're seeing what could be. Yeah, what could be. And, and I'm so stressed because I have the tool, I have the education, I know right. how to perform uh, independent control experiments, you know, and that's my trade. And that's right. what I can do. So, no. Yeah, I'm you need to get rid of the barrier on that window, right? So yeah. you can go through it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and if people want to see you, I'm sure you have a lot of published videos on oh, all yeah. the major sites yes. and everything and, and they could write to me again because i have picked out a few that are well better or more representative so they don't mm. have to scroll through a lot of video material but i have a few that are very good for them to start with yeah and also i have a list of publications and you do not need to be a scientist to read them okay good quite a few of um 
you know, general document um, uh, common uh, commentaries uh, for the general public. Uh, trying to um, uh, use a more common language. I think that's incredible. Yeah. You know, it, one of the things that is subtly taught in so-called higher education is how to sound incomprehensible so everybody yeah. will think you're so smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the really wise ones can convey deep understanding in simple language. Well, mm -hmm. I've tried. If I've succeeded, your viewers and listeners have to decide for themselves. Yeah, that sounds uh, great. Such papers uh, in different topics around the basic issue of adverse health effects and biological effects of artificial electromagnetic fields. Yeah. Power lines, uh, cell phone towers, cell phones, Wi Fi routers, etc., etc. You know. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. It's we could go on for weeks and weeks, and maybe we can do another episode at some point. Oh, um, that would be great! But then, I really can we invite a few of the billionaires. Well, what say that again? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, then we invite a few of the billionaires, exactly. Billionaires. Exactly. I, I have the sense that they do exist, I just don't know who they are yet. Um, I have also a strong sense, but if I should be very brutally honest um, unfortunately i would say the richer people are the less interested they are in supporting and helping and that's uh, not just by chance there are gatekeepers yeah, into the sources and, of wealth and, and and the generous people that help <clears throat> me and my co-workers yeah they are plain ordinary uh, citizens uh, i agree salaries and so on and uh, I remember, for instance, my mother and, you know, when I grew up and uh, my mother and father were very poor, actually, they yeah. hardly had any money whatsoever, but she always gave a few dollars per year to the church. And when we grew up, I remember I asked her, you didn't have that money. You still gave it, mommy. Why? Well, you have to, otherwise you are not a human being, she said. Yeah, exactly. And in a way that's yeah. actually real, you're yeah. giving it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, exciting. Yeah. Okay, hold on and we'll say goodbye in the break here. And um, so there goes Ole, Dr. Ole jo Johansson from Sweden. Um, incredible example of a real scientist, in my opinion. Uh, in the sense that he's open to ideas that he hasn't thought of before. Um, he's not working to get the results that are preset by some big financial interest. And um, he knows that the reason for scientific inquiry is the, to benefit life and benefit humans, benefit all life on the planet. And he's doing that. So I would encourage people to look for his videos which I'm sure are all over YouTube and uh, Facebook and other places like that. He doesn't really have a website that he's doing right now, but he's got a site that he referred us to uh, called Honeywire, H-O-N-E-Y-W-I-R-E dot O-R-G slash research, oh, honeywire.org slash research. And that's for donations to his work. And that's a really worthy cause, it seems to me, because the frequency world uh, needs to be thoroughly investigated, not just the damaging part, which he and others have done extensively already, but the positive applications. And he is really open to that and already looking at it. He's got all kinds of great research in mind that just needs funding. And you can't get uh, the usual sources to fund research that's actually good for people if it doesn't support a drug or s injection or something like that. So I would invite people with resources to consider supporting him and get in touch with us because even if you don't want to help our work at all, there are so many other things that are valuable like Dr. Johansson's work and long lists of other things that are urgently needed right now. So uh, if you're one of those people with resources, get in touch with us at lostartsradio.com. There's contact forms there. And what else? Um, 
remember that we have new videos coming out called Voice in the Wilderness. I'll probably make another one today. Stay in touch with you that way that are up on various platforms and uh, trying to make as many that are feasible to put up on all the platforms as much as possible. Otherwise, I'll make two versions and um, help us spread the links to get past shadow banning and viewer count reversal and uh, censorship and things like that. That helps a lot. And if you have resources and want to help us stay on the air with our commercial free broadcasts, uh, you can go to lostartsradio.com, which also shows where we're on the air still. And uh, there's a donate button there and a subscribe star link. Both of those work for helping us keep operating. And we have large projects that are expensive that we don't have money for. And if you want to help with that, donate that way or get in touch with us, lostartsradio.com. I think that's one of the main things. But as Oli said that you know, before there's a lot of money to use for these good causes, there's still things we can do. And we're working on those at planetaryhealingclub.com, and you can join us there if you want to. Um, that starts with yourself and realizing the power you have to transmute your own life into something incredible and then spread it quickly, you know, while there's still time before uh, the powers of darkness get their goal. I think we need to do our work right now. So that's the idea. Starts with taking care of yourself, becoming conscious, getting your own health back, finding out the suppressed real health information and using it. And watch how you're thinking of and feeling toward and treating other creatures and other humans. Um, it's much more powerful than you think, and it affects you in real time. So, um, wake up who you really are. That's the most powerful thing you can do. Take care of yourself. And we'll look forward to seeing you here again next time. Remember lostartsradio.com. Stay in touch with where we're on the air. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take it easy. <laughs> 